Hello, dear ones. Welcome to Touch by the Lord, a program that will build your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. We thank the Lord so much for how far he's brought us. We are grateful for life. We look around us, many other things that is going on, but the Lord has preserved our lives. We just want to give him thanks. If you would want to share your testimony on Touch by the Lord, please do so with a brief write-up of your testimony to the handles you see on the screen, and we we'll get back to you. This week, we thank the Lord so much for bringing us a man of God to our studio to share his testimony to bless us all. A district pastor of the Church of Pentecost. His name is Reverend Kofi Yantechi Bonsha. This week, he will share his testimony to bless us. Onsofu, <laughs> welcome to Touch by the Lord. Thank you. Um, of mommy and mommy so <laughs> please share with us your testimony okay. when you shared a little of your testimony I was shocked yeah. and surprised yes. how far God has brought you yes thank you very much um, like you said Kofinian uh, I was born some 47 years ago in a cottage called Infanibu. Called? Infanibu. In other words, if you want to undertake any venture, don't estimate it to, for it to scare you that uh. you can't do it. Infaweni Emu. Infaweni Emu. Yes. That's my father's own cottage. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. About two buildings, and that is where we grew up near a village called Mensa Krum, mm. which is also near to Obuasi somehow. Oh, okay. So I could carry two land in the Ashanti region. Okay. Um, I am the last born of eight children of my mom and the tenth born of the sixteen children of my <laughs> father who are alive as I'm speaking now. Wow. And um, in fact, my father was uh, a cocoa farmer. But basically in those days, I don't know if it still remains, that most of the cocoa farmers will add palm wine tapping good as oh, part okay. of their distance. So oh, okay. my father was equally a palm wine tapper. Oh, okay. In other words, like you he will use his the the palm in his in his cocoa farm. He wouldn't let somebody come and take advantage he of do it. Himself. So he do it himself. And I remember um, growing up, I think about seven, eight years old. When the, the wine is coming initially, it is, it is less of alcohol. So that one is very sweet. So they say that one is not alcohol. So the children can take it. But because it's, it's so much sweet, children would want to take them. And even though it is not so much alcoholic, you cannot say uh, in chemistry, certainly there will be some kind of alcohol in it. And my father would give to us, and I remember one time, all of us, at the age of about seven, we, we, we got drunk and we didn't know what was happening. Wow. That is the only time in my life I remember I tasted something which, which tastes like alcohol. And my mom, by the grace of God, according to her, she was um, a staunch uh, member of a fetish, a fetish if you like, religion in our hometown. Hmm. But when she conceived me, she got converted oh, by, okay. I think, her, uh, her eldest daughter. And for me, I was born into the church because when I was conceived, then my mother got gave her life to Christ. to Christ. And God really had a purpose for me for doing that, else I would have died. I grew up to see the two teeth of my mom um, displaced 
And when I asked, he said that when I was about one year old, I nearly died. Mm -hmm. And by then she had converted and had received the Holy Ghost baptism. And in that infernal, there is no car, there is no means nothing. of transport, there's nothing. So when we are sick, the only thing our mother would do is to pray and pray and pray until we are healed. Wow. So according to her, those teeth got lost without her knowing where it got to. When hey. I was dying and she was praying for me. Wow. So she prayed and prayed and prayed and lost the teeth without knowing. And I came back to life. And uh, moving forward, I, I always acknowledge my mommy when I'm ministering on the platform because she really gave me what any mother should give to the child. She gave me Christ. And she gave me the Spirit of God. At that tender age. At that tender age. At that tender age of about between 8 to 10 years, we could go to our Sunday school teacher's village, teacher Jekum. We could go to his house and fast for three days, away from our parents for about three days. Though I was below 11 years, I remember very well because my father died in 1984 when I was 11 years. Wow. That we had to move from Infernibu to our hometown, which is Kwasu de Diako, near Ejusu. So when I recall and realized that before we moved to our hometown, I was fasting and I was being camped in the house of our Sunday school teachers. Then I could calculate that it would be between the age of 8 and 11. Mm -hmm. And he trained us so much so that I could read the Bible myself at that age, do my own fasting and pray. So when our father died um, at age 11, we had to move to my hometown, as I have said. And it was in those days that when, especially a man dies, the relatives could come and take over the property. Everything. Everything. Leaving the woman Leaving the woman. And my mother was, I think she was born somewhere in 1933. And according to her, in those days, they would perform that uh, puberty yeah. rite. And as soon as that ceremony is over, any responsible young man who wants a responsible wife to marry, they just give. you just follow and wow. So according to her, after the puberty yeah. rite celebration, my father came to ask for her hand in marriage. And she was taken to that infallible at that, ten, at that age of about 18 to 19 years. And we stayed there from that time even if it's, she was 1933, if we add some 18 years, then we spent all, she spent all her days in that village. So when my father died and we had to come back to our hometown, I, usually, I normally say that it was like Joseph and Mary <laughs> who moved to their own hometown, but they didn't have a place to stay. I always appreciate, um, it's, it's even extended uncle, extended uncle's wife. Mami asked Antoine here, so rest in peace. When we came to the hometown, we didn't, we didn't have a place to stay. So you came with nothing? We came with nothing. When your dad died? When our father died. All and the cocoa farm and the Yes, in whatever. fact, for them, they were very tact, uh, uh, tactful or tactical. They didn't say they had taken them away. But my auntie said uh, she is taking, um, she is the nest of kin. And therefore, she's taking over the cocoa and will use it to take care of us. And that was just um, what she said. But she did not allow my, my mothers, because my father had two wives, she didn't allow them to stay in that village to continue the farming. But all of us had to come back. So when we came, my mom had nothing to do. She didn't have a parcel of land to cultivate uh, food crops for our uh, living. So this woman called Amiya Santua accommodated my mom in her house. And when she's going to her own farm, she will go with my mom so that my mom will support. And then uh, she will get something out of the farm to come and take care of us. But because I was the last one, almost all of them had grown somehow. And the three of us who were young, one was schooling in Kumase already before our father died. And the two of us left was with our mom, and we came to uh, our hometown. And um, God being so good, uh, on vacation, I went to visit my sister, who was staying at Asqua in Kumasi. 
And in the house that my sister was staying was a Shushan boy called Adumako. <laughs> so one time when he went out to set his table to do his usual uh, mending of torn uh, shoes. shoes and those stuff, I was just sitting by him. And I didn't ask many questions, but just sitting observing. by him and observing. When school reopened and I was coming back to the Biaku to continue, that was, I was in class five by then. I told my sister that I know how to do shoe shine. So get me uh, a box. Yes, get me a box and those tools. <laughs> I said, how did you get it? I said, when Admakun was doing it, I looked was at it observed. so I can do it. So when I returned to my hometown, I just started doing the shoe shine. And they were saying that, hey, mommy, I you, but my, mom, my mommy is Akosu Achunwa. Akosu Achunwa is Brifa. I said, mommy, I you, but I'm Akosu Achunwa is Brifa. To which uh, my younger son has gone to Kumasi to learn how to do shoe shine. So everybody would want to bring it to me because I am a Kumasi boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing that shoe shine, and the money I was getting from the shoe shine was what I was giving to my mom to take care of us. In those days, I remember. The last born. Yes, I being the last born, and the, the one who, who comes. Um, directly before me was in Kumasi. So the third one, the two of us were there, and I was doing the shoe shine. And because she didn't have any um, livelihood in her hometown, life was very difficult for my mom. So when I do the shoe shine, I guess little money, I'll give it to my mom to buy some fish and those stuff to take care of us. And got to a time when the, the meat that he will use to prepare the soup he had to remove them so that we eat without the, the meat, so that the following day you can use the same meat to prepare another soup. Because mm. if you chew it, we can't get money to buy it again. Wow. So we just want the, the meat to enable her to prepare the soup, and then we use it to eat, so that we keep it for another day mm. for her to use it. So um, when uh, vacation... So this continued? Yes, that continued. It continued. and. Um, when I went to the village and I was able to uh, do the shoe shine, when I returned, in order not to compete with that admakun who taught me, what I was doing was that I would rather go out with the shoe shine. I would not. They they had. They were at this. Good. They had a, a particular a stationery, so they they will, they will all be on their tables. And if you you want to come and mend your shoe, you just bring it there. But I was not part of them. I would take my shoe shine box. We were staying at our square old town. I would take my shoe shine box, go to where in those days we call our square bungalow, where the uh, Church of Pentecost, uh, Makinu Temple is. We go to that area, do my normal shoe shine uh, routine things. So were you knocking the box? Yes. Coco, coco, coco. And I was getting money. And um, that was when I was in class five. So when, during vacation, I would come to Kumasi and do the shoe shine. I'll get a lot of money. When school opens, I go and give them to my mom, and then she uses it for. So me. that is how you were taking care of. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. From that age, Good. eleven. Eleven. So when? Till for shoes, I did it until nineteen ninety three. So from nineteen eighty five to nineteen ninety three. So from age eleven to to about twenty years. Age eleven to twenty. Yes. So through secondary school. Yes. Okay. So let me let me bring in or let me jump to secondary mm. school, and we we manage life like that with our mom, and um, after six all years all this time were you going to church? Yes, yes. With all the, the difficulties. By the yes, by the grace of God, because they gave me that very sound and solid foundation when I was thirteen years, mm. I received the Holy Ghost baptism. So uh, having received the Holy Ghost baptism, I. I, I considered myself as matured in the spirit or mm. in the church. So I was praying my tongues every, every, I mean, everywhere from that age of 13. And I went to meet, uh, uh, if, I, if there are those people you can call them God, Godfather or Guardian Angel. When I got to uh, the middle school in those days, middle school, I went to meet an uh, English teacher called Mr. Osei Tutu Steven. May he still rest in, in peace as well. And Form 3 getting to Form 4, this man said that 
you have to write common entrance. In fact, I had never heard anything called common entrance. <laughs> I didn't know anything about secondary school because I was the last born and none of those preceding me had gone to the secondary school. Wow. So when we say you have completed school, it means you have completed form four. Wow. So I never knew of anything called secondary school. And this man said, no, you will go to secondary school. In fact, what pushed him so much was when I was in form two, middle school form two, uh, I was attacked by measles. Is that correct? Yes, measles. And I nearly died. So throughout the whole term, I didn't go to school. When they were about to write the exams, I, I was recovering. You managed? Yes, I was recovering somehow. So uh, my brother came to tell me that next week we are writing exams. So then I told my mom that then I will go to school. Ah, you, you've been sick all this, so I never went to school. How, how can you go? Even if you go, what they learn, how can you go and write? And mm -hmm. I will go. So I went with that my brother to school. I managed to go. And that was the revision week. So I just take his book. Ah, yeah, this one, how did you do it? And they were, we did it like this. I will go through. And when the exams came, in those days was when we were we announced who was first, who was second. And when the exams result came, I was first. And I said, ah, this guy never came to school. And so they, they called us that Kofi. My father is Kofi Abu Bonsra. Kofi Abu Mane, the only a drone is here. In other words, Kofi Abu student, we have some special power that with which we, we study. So this teacher said, no, this, this, this boy should go to secondary school. So, mm. Abu, you write a common entrance. And I said, what is it? And then he told us of the registration fee to my mom. And my mom said, for me, I, I don't have that money. By then, um, because I had been going to Kumase and I knew my sister's place, then my mom said, then take him to your sister's. And then I took him to uh, my sister's and he told them. And then they were able to give that amount for registration to write the common entrance. I wrote the common entrance, and by the grace of God, I performed very excellently. And so, I had so your whole family, you were the one who went to the second school? Yes. Wow. Yes. So I wrote the exams, and by the grace of God, the results was excellent. And I had, by then they will write to you, uh, was so Pukwa wrote to me, mm -hmm. Kumasi High School wrote to me, Technology Secondary School also wrote to me. And then he went back to my mom, and my mom, together with me, went to that my auntie who, who inherited my, my father. Your father's school. And the answer for? that, that uh, my auntie gave to my mommy was, was, was very pathetic. And she wept on that day, she wept and wept and wept. And then when we went to we said then, go if we take them again to your sisters and let's see what they will say. So we came to my sister. We needed 80 pesos by then for my 80 pesos. 80 pesos. Uh, 80 pesos. 80 yeah. pesos. In those that we call it 8,000. Is that correct? Yes, 80, 80, 80 pesos. <laughs> uh, one CD minus 20 pesos. One CD minus 20 That is all that I needed. 80 pesos. 80 pesos. So we went and my brother, uh, George Ebu Bonsra, who um, come directly um, before me. He, after Form 4, was working with a sawmill, and he was able to take salary ad advance. That amounted to that 80 pesos. 80 pesos. Salary advance? Yes. Wow. Meaning that his salary at that time was not up to 80 pesos. Yeah. I'm talking about 1989. Mm. Yeah, so uh, he was able to take that loan, to, uh, to gi give it to the teacher, and then the teacher told them that as for technology secondary school, because it is the, the lecturers and the doctors and the teachers' children who are there, we don't pay school fees. That is what he said to deceive them. And it was God's doing. Uh. So because he said you don't pay school fees, if you are able to pay this 80 pesos, that's all. You don't pay anything. So it encouraged them. They went to borrow that 80 pesos and they went to pay. Not knowing it wasn't, it wasn't true. So after paying that admission fee, and then the teacher told me that, you are from a village school, but the, the students over here, most of them are the lecturers, sub, uh, children, and those stuff. So please don't make yourself as uh, you are from the village. Try and speak the English to them. And he just encouraged me, and he left. That was, that was the last time this teacher left me. Were you able to finish? Yes. I was wow. able to finish. But the, the painful side of it was that my first year into the secondary school, my mommy also died. Oh. And you know, do you know what killed my mom? Mm -mm. Because she didn't have any livelihood. What she was doing was that when people do um, um, palm nut soup, you go for the 
the kennel. Palm kennel. Yes, yes. Adre. Adre, good. You, the palm kennel. Go, yes, yes, yes. You go for the, the palm kennel and use them to prepare uh, adrenal. Yeah, the palm kennel oil. The palm kennel oil. By then I was in school, so she was alone in her hometown. Mm -hmm. And when she was opening or when she was crushing them, cracking it. Yes, yeah, some of the the hard cover hit the, the leg and she didn't take it serious. Se serious. And that's how she and died. And before she realized that the leg was swelling up and not knowing titanos had, had taken over it and that's how come she died. That's why I say my mommy died so painfully. So um, sometimes when I'm talking about my mommy's death, if I don't control my emotions, I... So... Um, Viewers, <laughs> you have heard this testimony. It is... It's very sad and surprising and all that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You are listening to the testimony of Reverend Kofinian Techi Bonsra. It's so touching. If you would also want to share your testimony on Touch by the Lord, please do so with a brief summary of your testimony to the handles you see on the screen and we'll definitely get back to you and give you the opportunity to share your testimony to bless the world. Bible says that we overcame the enemy by the bread of our testimony. Share it to bless others. God will surely bless you. God has done so much for many people. You are watching us and you know what God has done for you. Please share your testimony to encourage others. I would want to say thank you to Red Cotton for my beautiful costume. So awful. And this is you. Patch out to us. All right. Yeah, so um, I started secondary school. My mommy died the first year. That was in um, uh, April 1990. I started school in October 1989. And then just a few months into uh, the following year, my mom died. And but you know the interesting thing? Mm -hmm. Your mom was not doing much for her education. Yes. You were doing the shoe shine, exactly. and then you give the money to her. Exactly. Yes. So when she died, um, for finances, like you said, um, God had given me that, that um, avenue to take care of myself. The shoe shine. The shoe shine. Was it paying? It was, yes. It was good? Yeah, for my level, it was paying. And wow. it got to your point that... I was not doing that alone. I would, I would get up at the dawn by, say, 5.30. At that time, or during those days, they were using the dead news, as we used to call it, the old newspapers, the newspapers. foreign newspapers. Mm. It's what they were using to wrap those um, pastries that mm. they do. So I would go at the dawn and supply those um, uh, newspapers to, to, the, to the, them. Those who to, sell. To sell. I'll come and take my shoe shine box around say seven or six thirty seven and go around and do my shoe shine and the money that I'll get from these two, I'll go and buy kerosene because at that time lighting system was not very much at where we were staying. So a lot of people were depending on kerosene for the lighting. lanterns. Yes. So I'll go oh, for okay. kerosene and in the evening I'll set the kerosene. So on I'll your do, own. On my own. So I was doing these three jobs at the same time. So, so that you'll be able to so go to I'll school. So that I'll be able to go. But then I was in secondary school. Yeah. And that, that time was when vacation classes was very competitive. Yeah. When during vacation, everybody wants to um, register themselves with um, a vacation classes, which is popular. We have some popular teachers that if, if this teacher is there, then we have vacation classes. I never knew, knew of what they call vacation classes. You didn't go. I didn't go because you do I was doing my shoe shine. shoe shine. And one one pain, painful thing that I will never forget with my shoe shine doing was um, 
in I think in the same year, 1990, after my mom died, I went to shoe shine and I was crossing a very big gutter. And unfortunately, I fell and my mouth hit the edge. You fell in the gutter? I fell in the gutter and my mouth hit the edge of the gutter. And the two teeth here, this thing is not natural, this piece. Wow. It's not natural. So the, that teeth plus this. They, took, they went off. It sank. It sank, it sank it inside. Sank like that. And I, was, I didn't know well. I was not taken to any hospital. So what I was doing <laughs> is that I will use the teeth here to push it. So I'll be pushing it small, small. And within some week, I've been able to push it back to normal. Hey. And after about two, three, four, six months. This one, it was good. My, this one is my face like this started paining me. And the head started swelling up. Hey. I was taken to the Confanoche, and my, the, the whole teeth, the whole set of the teeth was paining me. So I was taken to the hospital at Confanoche to the dentist. And <sighs> when they examined me, what they said was that if my sister had delayed further, I would have died because the two teeth which um, got sunk into it uh, some months ago that we didn't take um, any notice of it or we didn't work on it had generated a kind of, of, of uh, sour inside such that it was, it was rotten into my, into my head. E. So they had to remove that it was one decaying. quickly. Yes, it was in your head? Yes, into my head. So when they removed it, there was no blood. But what came was like when a boil, yeah, yeah. that whitish mm. substance that comes. That is what came from that thing. And according to them, that, this one was stronger than, than that. But the, the two teeth had been affected. So they said that after some weeks or months, when that part is healed, I should come for them to remove this one also. And then I gave my sister a condition, a condition that before I go to remove the second one, you have to fix artificial one for <laughs> this, else I can't have that space, big space over there. And my sister said she would do it. So when the time was due for me to go and remove this, I told my sister, please go and do the artificial one before you go. And he said, no, you go and do it before. I said, no, if you don't do it, I won't go. And that is how come I'm sitting here without removing that one. So and how did the gap close? Because probably I was young. I was 17, 16, 17. No, I was 17 years by so then. 17, it's and not... And now I'm 47, so it's about 30 years ago. This so, one, it might be God. Well, not that it might be God. It's God. <laughs> In fact, it's God. So God knew... Uh, he had to work on it for me, yeah. so God did it. Because you become a preacher you later. See. So moving forward, um, I, I went through the secondary school uh, with my shoe shine. And when I got to Form 4, one time, you see, like I said, the school I attended um, had students whose parents were very rich. They would come and pack. These, in those days, Pajaro wasn't a common car to, to see. And you see all of them, lecturers coming to take their children and I would just, I would, if, if you know the, the geography or the connection very well, I was staying at Asquare Old Town and I was schooling at Tech, on Tech campus. I was walking. From Asquare to From Asquare to Tech. It's very far. The, throughout my secondary education. Secondary, secondary education. If, if I attended school for 100 days, I would say that the number of them I took car would not be up to 20 days. <laughs> the 80 days would be you for were walking. You walking? I was walking. I was walking. So one time I was walking from, I passed Amakum and Amas, uh, Mankwetia Secondary School. I remember very well on, the, on that stretch of road. I became so emotional and so sad. And I, I began to, if you like, fight with God and cry. God, why am I suffering like this? When huh. we close from school and I see my colleagues jumping into their father's car, what, what wrong have I done that I don't have a father, I don't have a mother? And I started weeping. I was weeping. It was raining very good. It was raining and it was raining over me. And then I became so sad and I was <laughs> weeping. And then I could hear a clear voice referring me to Isaiah chapter 66 verse 2. Mm. I quickly referred to that scripture. And what God was saying is that those that he would, he would take care of are those with contrite spirits, mm. those who are humble, mm. those who trembles at his, wear, mm. his, um, his, his word. word. And the New King James says that those who are poor. So when I read it, I said, Lord, this one is a perfect description of me. I'm mm. poor. Mm. Number two, 
I, I tremble at your word. Mm. At my age, I mean... You're I, not doing any bad yes. thing. So I say, God, that's for this one. I qualify. So then you have to take care of me. I was walking by, I was praying. Mm. And you know what God did? That was around the time we were supposed to pay for registration to do our O-level exams. Mm. And the tuition I had made was not enough, enough for that. Within that week, I went to visit um, one of my sisters, my mommy's second born. And her husband was running what you used to call drugstore. These days, they say over the counter, um, um, over the counter medicine seller. And he knew me, he knew I was schooling, but he never asked of how I was, I was being taken care of. But within that week that I confronted God, and God said he was going to take care of me, I went to that, my sister, I went to greet my, bro my brother-in-law, uh, the Timothy J. Jesse, may God bless him very well. And he asked me, so Joe, why the 12 school fees? And I said, oh, that, um, when I do the shoe shine, I get some money. And when somebody also give me money, I keep it. He said, oh, if you need to go here, I can me. And just the following week, we went to school and they requested that we pay for the registration, which I didn't have the money. I, I don't remember the amount, but I think it was around two CDs, 40 pesos or so. And I had to go and tell that my brother-in-law who God had caused him to, to give me that promise. And he gave it to me to go and pay. So by the grace of God, I completed Form 5, continued um, um, with the A-level in those days. And I was a science student. You see, because I didn't have parents and I also didn't even know of education. Mm. I didn't have any focus that I'm going to the secondary school to become this and this mm -hmm. and this. I didn't know. So when, in those days, from Form 1 to Form 3, you do all the subjects, mm. all the 14 subjects. Then you choose. So, so when you are going form to Form 4, four then you choose which um, um, field you want to pursue. So what they did was that, Omo Oma Bini Nina Enkoye Science. Planet. In other words, those who are brilliant, and probably those who are brilliant and they don't have um, a focus mm. for themselves, <laughs> they should go and do science. So because by the grace of God, they said I was brilliant, mm. I was asked to go and do science. That is how come I became you ended up doing science. Yes, doing, doing science. So when I went to do science, in my, in my in ambition, mind. I was mm -hmm. saying that I will become a doctor. Mm. And at the same time, I was calling myself evangelist. Yeah. So at that age, I, call, I used to write at the back of my book, Evangelist Dr. Ebu Kofi Joseph. <laughs> so I completed um, this form with my pure science. And after national service, we had the news that Coca-Cola wanted um, A-level science students to train them for wow. lab technician work. Wow. And um, I went to apply, and miraculously, I mean, the way... Um, it happened. It happened. If I want to bring it, it's another story. Yeah. So I found myself working with Coca-Cola in 1998 wow. after my national service. And uh, I worked with them as a laboratory technician for seven years, from 1998 until 2004. When you were when called into the I ministry. I was called into the full-time ministry. And oh. when I put all this together, I, I, I have no boast of myself than mm. to ascribe everything about me to God. Mm. Because... Um, I, I look up to the foundation that my, my mom gave me and how, by the grace of God, I, also, I was also able to adhere to um, the word of God yeah. and what my mommy um, taught me to do. Yeah. And, if, and I, I always also want to acknowledge and appreciate Mr. Osei too who initiated me into the secondary school. Yeah, the, because the, much as the ministry... The teacher. Yes, yeah, right? my yeah. teacher. He died... Just, just, just this year. Just it was God months. sent. Yes, and the the ministry is not about academic anyway. Yeah. But if if I had not if I had not studied at least to any level mm -hmm. that I would be able to read and I mean write, it would have been difficult yeah. for this purpose of God to have come it's true. true. But as far back as that tender age, when it is a children ministry week. My teachers will put me on table to give Bible recitation, sometime to come and preach. And um, secondary school, I never tagged myself or so forth, but everybody was calling yeah. me or so forth. And I felt so deep in me when, when, when I'm doing the work of God, I felt so much 
satisfied. Yeah, and you satisfied. I knew God, God needed me for a purpose. Yeah. But if God had not taken me through these um, steps stages. After, yeah, stages, probably I wouldn't have been here today. So if you ask me to share my testimony, to summarize everything, this is what I can say, that my life has been by God. In fact, yeah. it's, 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 we were not born, people do say that when you are born on, on the hill or on the mountain, <laughs> you, you become, you become tall, you, and tall and early. <laughs> but for some of us, not, not even on, on, on a plain land, <laughs> we were born into a pit, into a valley. But when God determines that he's going to use you for something, no matter your disadvantages, no matter the situation and the circumstances, God will ensure that what his purpose for you is, is accomplished. So when you were a teenager, yeah. you know the way teenagers live, yes. and your friends were having everything, and you were doing your situation, were you worried? Or you were never? I was not worried. I was not wow. worried until that, that one world. It is the Holy Ghost who who uh, Helped ca you. caused me to be worried on that day. I was never worried. I would walk to school uh, when they are going on break. If I used to fast a lot <laughs> during that tender age, I used to fast a lot. Because of no food? Not, not, not only because of no food, but in fact, my mommy trained me with fasting. So even if I had food, I used to fast a lot. So even when I don't have, when it's not about fasting, but it's because I don't have money, my friends will say, every day, they say, well, you're fasting, let's go. And then they will leave me and go because I don't have money. But I would not tell them I don't have money. Yeah. Yeah, so I was not worried. And by the grace of God, because I received the Holy Ghost baptism early. At a tender age. Yes, it, he helped me so much. Yeah. He helped me so much that, um, if you like, I was not feeling the normal feeling of, 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 of my the, colleagues. Yes, yes of, the youth. Of, of, of my age. So God tamed me from a lot of, if you like, biological experiences or bi biological instincts such that I was able to keep Yourself. myself holy and as wow. a living sacrifice for God wow. throughout that age. And that is throughout your he, teenage years. Yes, that is why and how come I was bold when God told me that um, those that he takes care of are the, to, I, are I, the I was, humble and yes, the contrite I told God that I, I qualify for every one of them I qualify. And 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 I really qualified. Because, and he did. Yes, and he did. And he did. So, um, yes. That is I it. wanted to ask that. So all that you went through. Yes. Doing shoe shine and all that. Yes. Where were your siblings? Your, your elder siblings? Because you were eight. Yes. Where were the seven? I was staying with um, the eldest one among, among us. She, she's a woman or she's a female. She was the one I was staying with. In fact, I was quite old time. Everybody knew I was her firstborn. Mm. Because he was the firstborn and I'm the last born, mm. you can see the, the, the age difference. difference. Good. So I was staying with her. In fact, my siblings, I can never, um, um, I can never say they did not help me. All of them, like I said, my, my brother who I come directly after, was the one who paid for my admission 80 fee. Pesos. Good. So all of them were doing their best, except that because they, after Form 4, they didn't have any uh, um, education, and some of them didn't have any formal uh, vocation to pursue. Life wasn't easy, easy for them. For them. Okay. So they were doing their best to help. Mm. But I knew and I understood them that life wasn't easy. So if I could also do something, why? don't I do it? So when I was, even when my mom died, and then I was permanently staying with that, my, my sister who became my mother, I was still doing the shoe shine. And to help her? Yes, to help her wow. take care of, of us. Hmm. You know this song? Uh-huh. A broom and tears is so. And to me, Pamini. Now I am in say, Rati. Oh, yeah. Once it's a minion. 
Now I God is faithful. God is very, very faithful. I want you to speak a word to someone watching us. Good. And he's going through difficult times. Good. Do you know what, what is surprising to me? Uh-huh. You were crossing a big gutter. Exactly. And as young as you were, yes. you fell and your mouth hit the edge of the gutter. Yes. And your two teeth entered. Yes. And God kept you. They yes. decayed. Yes. God closed the gap. Yes. God is faithful. Exactly. He knows our end from our exactly. beginning. Exactly. And today you are a powerful sovereign <laughs> of the Church of Pentecost. Yeah. So please say something to the young ones going through difficult times. Good. Good. And good. watching us. Good. Um, I, will, I was going to read the scripture God gave to me, but before I say that, you see. One thing that I would want, want to say is that you might, you might be disadvantaged. Yeah. It's not your fault. Mm. You might find yourself in situations and circumstances that militate against sources. That's it. That is not your fault. That's it. But you don't have to relax and you don't have to be discouraged and you don't have to accept mm. the situation and your condition. You see, I'm very passionate um, for people in need. Mm. So I told you that we are planning to yeah. get a needy support foundation or whatever. Yeah. I'm very passionate for them. But I also don't accept excuses. When um, I, I, I remember a young girl came to me with a guy who had proposed to her, <laughs> and <laughs> the girl had completed SS, and she was very very good into 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 trading i mean i i've been calling her businesswoman and i asked what the level of the guy's education was and he said that she uh, he got to form three and stopped so he couldn't complete form three and i said why he said his father died when he was uh, in ss3 or at ss3 and therefore he didn't write and i said no this guy will not be serious <laughs> because my father died when i was at class four yeah and I took care of myself through mm. shoe shine and everything I could do. Nothing, Doing shoe shine, yeah. selling uh, uh, kerosene, selling papers, just to ensure that you I complete. go to school. And you had your final year, and your father has died. And you say that my father has died, and therefore I have stopped the school. No, you are not serious. Much as our sources depend on God, defy all odds mm. to come out, yeah. to become who God wants you to be. That's true. So I'm not claiming that, yes, I. I was very strong in the spirit or so ever that made me who I am today. Mm. It is the grace of God yeah. and the manifold grace of God and God's purpose for my life that has come to pass. But I also didn't relax no. and I was not lazy. You are not lazy. I, I said to myself that no, I will not stop the school. So from class four, it was in vacation. So when school reopens, then I will go to class five. So, so from class five to upper six. So upper six. My father was in there. My mommy left me when I started secondary school. And here I am with, with, with all the, so, the academics. So, so encourage somebody. Yeah, so what I want to, going yeah, to encourage anybody who is going through such a difficult time is that build your life on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Let the word of God be your foundation. Like I was saying, the, the foundation that I built my life on was this scripture in Isaiah chapter 66, verse mm -hmm. 2 which reads from the New King James that, for all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. And this portion, but on this one will I look, on him who is poor, number one, mm. and I was poor, That's it. and of a contrite spirit, mm. and who trembles at my word. Mm. So when I read this scripture, I told God that number one, I am poor, Number two, I know I have a contrite spirit. Mm. Number three, I tremble at your word. So God, you have no excuse not to take care of me because you say that these are the people you want to take care of, so take care of me. 
The point I want to make is that the word of God is as relevant yeah. to us as it was when it was written. Yeah. Sometimes people would want to think that, oh, this one was written by Isaiah to the people of Israel. No. The word of God is, is, is alive and is, is fresh That's every it. morning and every day. That's it. So if we read the word of God and we build our life on it, and you see, God is also as real as as, true. As, as I'm talking with That's you. That's true. Sometimes we, we, we picture God in our mind as if he's just an image somewhere. That's true. God is personal. That's it's, it. It's, it's, I'm writing a book, the, the God of the Village. That's it. There's a the God of the Village. Yes, that's the title of the book. There's a portion I call Personalization of God, mm -hmm. where mostly we say that the, the Lord my God. That's it. The Lord you are God. That's I call it. it Personalization of God. Sometimes you have to personalize God for yourself. You have mm. to customize God mm. for yourself. Mm. God is very real. It's so true. If you would give your life to Christ and depend on him, Amen. no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, if there should be anybody who would have been a pauper, it is, it is convenient to achieve on strike. True. But I thank God I'm not a pauper. Uh, you are not. Yes. The grace of God is what found me uh. and has led me and brought me here. That's true. So that same grace of God is still available for everybody. Amen. 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 Good. The grace of God is still available for everyone. He has, he has given us some life lessons. So I'm adding a few. The first one is, don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise small beginnings. He began from nowhere. Nothing. Yes. He says some people are born on on a hill. He was born in a pit. He did not remain in the pit. Don't despise small beginnings. Let's take a scripture from Job chapter 8 verse 7. He says, though your beginning was small, yet your end will greatly increase. Oh, hallelujah. Your beginning can be small. That one is not a problem. But let your end greatly increase because the word of God is true. Don't sit down and say that, like he said, you can do something and tell yourself that I will be a great person. Don't despise small beginnings. Focus on everything that you want to do. Don't worry if there is nobody there to take care of you. God is there for all of us. Amen. The second one is, the success of anyone is solely dependent on God. The success of anyone's life is solely dependent on God. Like he said, when he was going to school and it was raining because he was walking, he says, Father, this is what your word says in Isaiah 66 too. Yeah. I qualify. So if you know that this is what you are going through and you see a future, if you don't see it, you will not be able to get, um, take hold of it. See it and you will take hold of it. Because God is the one who makes us who we are. If you don't sit down and fold your hands and say that I don't have anybody, how can somebody work from Asuka to take? Yeah. It's very far. But today, God is keeping him. He's doing so well as a district pastor in his district in Kumasi. So don't know this, that your success solely depends on God, so that you also take God seriously. Don't think that, oh, I can do anything. You, you might be doing something and you think you are even thriving. But without God, you cannot go far. So let, let's learn this lesson. Let's take the scripture from Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So far as you acknowledge God in every situation, 
he will surely direct your sure. path. He says that trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's right. It's connecting to Isaiah 66 too. Yes. That a contrite heart yes. is the one that the Lord seeks. That's right. So if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and you don't lean on your own understanding, oh, meaning Bibi, if he sent her on my dear, or Costco on my dear, he was intelligent. If he said that, oh, my dear, and Timekwa, he would never have gone anywhere. Yeah. He trusted God with his heart. He didn't lean on his own understanding. In all his ways, he acknowledged him. That's why God was able to direct his path. Exactly. You are, you are watching us. Let this be your God word. And the Lord will take you so far. He spoke about Isaiah 66 verse 2. I have it too. Yeah. So I will not speak about it. Let's right. take the last life lesson. He says, be determined to make it in life. And don't be discouraged by your disadvantages. Be determined to make it in life. And don't be discouraged by your disadvantages. He was just 11 when the father died. He didn't sit to say that my father is dead, so I can't do anything. He went to sell kerosene, paper. He, he was a shoe shy boy. He took care of himself at age 11 through school. And the Lord took care of him. Be determined to make it in life. And don't be discouraged by your disadvantages. Let's take Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10a. I love it. Last week I used it. This week too. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. That's right. Do it with all your might. Yes. Having hope in Christ that he would take us somewhere. That's right. Hope maketh not a shame. I love that a lot. If you hope in God, you'll never be ashamed. Exactly. You can go through all the negatives. But once you are looking up to the Lord, you will never be ashamed. And I know you have been blessed by the testimony of our dear Osofu. Rev, God richly bless you Amen. for blessing us this week. Amen. Thank you also for the opportunity mm. to share our life story. Amen. Um, uh, we're praying that this program will change lives and Amen. also even save lives. Amen. If somebody thought that he was the worst, yeah. these testimonies yeah. put together will let the person know that, yeah. no, somebody once upon a time was, yeah. was the worst. Yeah. But he survived through True. the skills and therefore he can also make it. That's true. So you are, you, are, you are doing a very good job. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Right. Viewers, you have heard it all. I want you to hope in the Lord, to trust in Him. Don't be worried about the situations you are going through because at the end of it all, God will come through for you. You heard our, our daddy's testimony. If you would also want to share your testimony, please do so with a brief write-up of your testimonies to the handles you see on the screen. And will surely get back to you. Please share our videos to families, friends, and loved ones so that they will also be blessed. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sam TV Official. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. I want to say God bless you for watching us day in and day out. I say thank you again to Red Cotton for my beautiful costume. Thank you so much, the crew of Touched by the Lord. They are doing so much for the Lord behind the scenes. I appreciate you so much, Otis, Akins, Albert, and the, our director, Reverend Abosi. God richly bless all of you. Amen. We thank the Lord for how far he's brought us. Amen. That will be all for this week. Good. good, good. Catch us next week, same time. Bye-bye. Amen.